Hey everyone, it's Lily here and today I'm going to take you through an Android tutorial to help you set up an app with three tabs at the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so if you haven't downloaded Android Studio, you can go ahead and Google like literally download Android Studio and the first one should be this uh, link to download it. So you can click on there or I'm not gonna take you through the process of downloading Android Studio. There's plenty of videos for that. We're just gonna go ahead and get started as if you've already downloaded Android Studio. All right, so once you see this window, you're going to wanna click start a new Android Studio project. And then um, the first thing I wanna talk about is how Android Studio gives you all of these templates for your app. So the one we're going to start with today is bottom navigation activity. As you can see, um, Android Studio is going to generate the UI and Java code uh, necessary to set up an app with three tabs at the bottom. After you choose bottom navigation activity, go ahead and click next. All right, so I'm gonna run through this really quick. Let's go ahead and call this uh, my tab app. So this is going to be your app name right here. The second property is called package name and basically package name is a unique identifier for your app on the Google Play Store. So that's how Google will identify your app on the Play Store. Every single app on the Play Store has a different package name. So what I'd recommend is to make this middle one your, uh, your full name and then um, the last one will be your app name. Sometimes if you own a company, then you would put your company name here. If you're going to upload your app to the app store, uh, basically saying that a company owns it. Um, anyway, so the next one is a save location. Your save location is going to look different depending on your uh, computer. Um, the next thing you wanna choose is make sure that this is in Java. Honestly, you can choose Kotlin too if you want it to auto-generate the code in Kotlin, but um, for me, I'm going to do it in Java. The last thing is this minimum API level. What the minimum API level is, is basically describing how far back your app is going to support. So API 21 is equivalent to like a Galaxy S4 or S5. And so that phone's already pretty old. Um, so if you're supporting API 21 and up, that's going to cover 85% of devices. So I think that that is good enough for beginners. Supporting anything below API 21 kind of makes your code a little bit harder because you have to, uh, you might have to use some deprecated methods, which means Android, or, uh, which means Android doesn't really support those anymore. But it, that's what's necessary to support like old phones. Um, so it's really not worth your time to do that. Anyway, go ahead and click finish. Okay, guys. So once Android Studio has opened up and everything has synced successfully, you can go ahead and click this to kind of clear up the screen, close the tip of the day. And the first thing that Android Studio is gonna open is this activity main. If it doesn't open for you, make sure that your drop-down menu is in Android. Then you can go to app, res, and layout, and double click activity main and it will open it. So this is what I wanna show you here. This is activitymain.xml and .xml files are going to be used for the UI mainly. So this particular .xml file is laying out all of the UI elements for this app. So if you wanna click on text down here, which if it opened on this window, you can switch back and forth between design and text, but you can click on text and literally see all of this code that Android Studio has generated for you. And so this app is going to be um, basically a text view here, which is right here. And then this bottom navigation view is going to take care of these three tabs. So the thing about bottom navigation view is that Android has made it easier uh, for people to set up three tabs at the bottom by making a view that includes three tabs. So this is the XML file for the layout. So all of this stuff equals this screen over here on the left. So if you wanna go back to design and you're more of like a drag and drop person, you can click on any of these widgets and drag it onto the screen and it will automatically generate the uh, code in this text here. Um, as you can see, I dropped this button here and it generated this button code. So you can do it either way. I prefer to... <laughs> not drag and drop because when your layouts get more complicated it's practically impossible to drag and drop you have to arrange them in a very certain way so that everything is uh, lined up correctly so yeah let's go ahead and delete this button for now because we don't need it 
Um, so the next thing I want to show you is this Java code. So if you want to see the actual Java code that Android Studio generated, you can go to uh, Java and then click on this first one here because these two are for uh, unit testing, like writing unit tests. So you won't really be using those unless, you know, you want to write unit tests for your app later on down the road. But anyway, uh, open up the top one and double click on main activity. So um, if you don't know what dot Java files do, it's basically where you code all of the functionality for your app. So dot XML files usually have something to do with laying out the UI or um, creating a new shape or all of these different things in the dot XML files. And the dot Java file is going to be taking those UI elements that you put in the dot XML file and giving them functionality by coding with either Kotlin or Java. So the first thing I want to do is run this app and then I'm going to explain what all of this code means. So if you want to run your app on a physical device, meaning if you have an Android uh, tablet or an Android phone, you can literally plug your phone in via USB to your computer and Android Studio will be able to detect that you have um, an Android phone plugged in and you can click play and then your phone should show up underneath connected devices. So if you don't have, excuse this window for going crazy, if you don't have an Android device you can click on create a new virtual device and create a simulator which is actually what I'm going to be using in this tutorial. And so I've already created a Pixel 2 APIQ. Okay guys, um, so once your simulator or your physical device has been booted up and you see this install successful message, that means your app has successfully been installed. So what you want to do if you're on the simulator here is go to the bottom of it and swipe up and then you're going to be looking for my tab app or whatever you named the app in the beginning of this project. So click on it and it should open the app. So the first thing you're going to notice is um, you're going to see your app name at the top left. You're going to see the three tabs at the bottom and you're going to see this text view right here or this text. So as you notice, when I click another tab, it's going to change this text view. So that's the only functionality um, of this app right now. And Android Studio has generated all the code for that. And I'm going to explain what the code means and how you can modify it if you want to. So let's go back to mainactivity.java here. The first thing I want to talk about is variables. So as you can see right here, this right here is a variable um, and it is a local variable. That means that this variable can only be used within this bracket to this bracket because it's in this little function here. Now the thing I want to talk about is how to set a basically how to make a variable, like what do you need to do? Because when you make variables, um, especially for UI elements, you're making them with the purpose of connecting the .xml file, which is the layout file, to the job file, which is where you're going to code all the functionality for that UI element. So this is how we do it. We first start by making a variable. All right, so I want you to look at this first. This is going to be the bottom navigation view, which will represent these three tabs. That's what the, the UI element is called for those three tabs. The first thing I want you to notice is that how this bottom navigation view has an ID associated with it. Now, this is something that you're going to do for every single UI component that you want to add functionality to in your Java or Kotlin code is setting an ID in the XML. And then when you go to the Java code, you're going to be referencing that ID when you create a variable. So the first step in giving your UI component functionality is to create a variable and what you want to do is this is the variable type. So like I said, we're trying to connect this bottom navigation view to this nav view variable. So the variable type is going to be bottom navigation view. Now, the next thing you want to do is uh, call this find view by ID um, and then type in the ID that's in the XML. So, so so it'd be r.id.navview. And if you go back to the XML, you'll see that the ID associated with this particular instance of a bottom navigation view UI component is called nav underscore view. So now this nav view variable actually represents um, the bottom navigation view in this particular layout file. So that's what we want. The next thing you'll notice is that you'll see yet another 
um, UI component, this M text message here, and you'll see that um, it's identified with this ID message. So if we go back to our activity main.xml, we'll see that this text view right here, which is associated with this, uh, has the ID of message. But as you can see, it's M text message and you don't see um, the variable type right here. And that's because this variable is actually a class level variable. And that means that you can access this variable in between this bracket all the way to this bracket. So you'll be able to access it in this whole entire Java class. So the way to make a class level variable is normally going to the very top of the class under this public class main activity extends app compact activity you want to go ahead and go right underneath there and you want to assign it a private. Uh, so there's two different types of class level variables. There's private and public. Private means that you will only be able to access that variable inside of this class or this Java file. If you do public, then you have given yourself the opportunity to access it from other classes. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's declared private. Uh, the variable type is a text view, which is what we're looking at here, text view. Now, Class level variables uh, usually start with M and then you'll have like a capital letter here, M text message. That kind of represents uh, a class level variable and also um, Android Studio will make it purple for you so you can really tell that it's class level variable. As you can see, nav view is not a class level variable, therefore it's not purple. <laughs> Okay, so the next variable I want to explain is this bottom navigation view dot on navigation item selected listener. So this is actually a variable type for the listener for that bottom navigation view. So the way UI elements work in Android is that if you set a listener to them, that means that um, this listener is going to sit here and wait for the user to either click on home, dashboard, or notifications. So it's waiting for the user to click on one of these tabs and then it's going to figure out what tab the user clicked on and execute some code that you know basically says what you want to do when the user clicks on that. So in this particular app, all it's doing is changing the text of this text view right here. So right here I've defined a private class level variable that is variable type, uh, this specific listener that should be used with bottom navigation view. So some of the UI components in Android have very specific listeners for their specific purpose, like a listener for listening to three tabs versus a, uh, a generic on-click listener that would just listen for clicks for a button. So that's a little bit more simple than doing this uh, three tab setup here. So that's why it has its own specialized listener. So this is just a class level variable right here um, for this listener. And then this is the code associated for executing um, a specific line of code after the user has clicked on a specific tab. So when I click on this dashboard tab here, this listener is going to detect that I got a click event and then it's going to hit this switch statement, which is going to determine which case did I click on the navigation home? Did I click on navigation dashboard? Or did I click on navigation notifications? The listener is going to figure that out. And then since I clicked on dashboard, it's going to execute this code, which takes that M text message variable, which is referencing this text view here, right here in the UI, which is also equivalent to this text view right here. And it's going to set the text to dashboard. So this is the um, command if you want to set the text of a text view, you want to do your text message variable dot set text. You can type in your string in between uh, two quotation marks here like this. And so that's basically how this code works and how this simple three tabbed app works. Now you can modify it and make it a lot more complicated than that. Um, if you want and add your own code in here or change these texts if you want to. So that is all uh, for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on so you never miss another tutorial or even a video. Also, another reminder, Mark and I are going to be releasing our Android development course on June 12th, 2019. This course is going to teach you how to create your own social app. So there's so many valuable skills built into this course. So at the end of the course, you can literally say that you have a finished product that you can upload to the Play Store. So very exciting guys. So stay tuned for that course on June 12th and I will see you next time.